We all search for that spark which fuels our desire to fully engage in our lives. We look for the courage to experience moments where we can come alive instead of watching life pass us by. You're listening to The Front Row Factor, leaving fear and insecurity behind by exploring stories of top performers that are living life in the front row. Get ready to stand up, step up, and live it up with your host, John Vroman. Hey, Front Row, John Vroman here, and thanks for listening today. I'm grateful you're with me. I'm chatting it up with Honoré Corder, who's an author, coach, and speaker. She is an amazing person who you're just going to love. Before we get into that, I want to say thanks for sharing these shows. You know, when you're listening, ask yourself, who would benefit from the brilliance of this particular guest? And then pass it along. Also, thanks for your ratings and reviews on iTunes. If you can, please pause this right now and go to frontrowfactor.com slash review and give us an honest opinion of how we're doing today. We really want to know. All right, now let me tell you about our guest, Honoré. So Honoré Quarter is a best-selling author of more than a dozen books, including Vision to Reality, how, how short-term massive action equals long-term maximum results. She has that and so many other great books. Her mission is to inspire and motivate people to turn their vision and dreams into their life reality. Here's a woman who at nine years old broke the world record in a marathon category, 1979, three hours and 16 minutes she ran and broke a world record. She is uh, somebody who has such an incredible mindset. And we get into today all sorts of stuff, but including the power of no, productivity strategies, how she partnered up with Hal Elrod of The Miracle Morning to become his partner in the book in that book series, her story of living in a foster home and the struggles that she's endured growing up in her life and beliefs that have caused not only at one point for her to be held back, but now the beliefs she has that has caused massive success in her life. And that we talk about, and she said, and this is so brilliant, that it's not that anyone is stupid, there's just a gap in their knowledge. That Wisdom bombs like that are dropped all throughout this interview. Please enjoy and make sure to check her out at honorequarter.com, which we'll link to in the notes. But here we go, on to the show. Honoré, welcome to the show. So good to have you. I am so happy to be here. I might spontaneously combust. <laughs> well, <laughs> good morning. And, uh, you know, listen, if, if everybody could see your smile, perhaps they're watching on YouTube, but you just, uh, you look radiant today. I told you that you have, you're illuminating positive yeah. energy and great vibes as you always do. It is such a pleasure to be in your company. So let's start today by talking about, and this is going to be a big question. Okay. What are some highlights going on in your life right now? What are you excited about? What's happening? Well, I'm excited that spring break is coming. So we're going on vacation as a family. So I'm excited about that because we're going to go. Where are you going? We're going to go to spend uh, four days in the French Quarter in New Orleans. Oh, and then nice. we're going to go on to the beach in Florida for a few more days. Beautiful. Oh, that's and great. And so I'll be completely unplugged and disconnected. Well, sort of. I mean, who's ever more than four inches away from their eyes? <laughs> but I'll be completely disconnected <laughs> other than my three Apple products that are on my person at all times. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm excited about the Miracle Morning book series. There are a couple of books in the queue, and I'm super excited about them. And Can you tell us? Is it top secret? No, they've been announced. So the Miracle Morning for writers yeah. with the co-author of Steve Scott, who is – a legend in the book writing community, making lots of money on Kindle and just really has a, a sound business model. And then the Miracle Morning for Parents with Mike and Lindsay McCarthy. And uh, so May 1st and September 1st of this year. And then we have people interested in co-authoring all the time that are reaching out. So I think we'll have some more books in the queue pretty soon. That's so great. And now, uh, which, which books are out right now for those who may not be familiar with The Miracle Morning? Uh, maybe give a quick little synopsis of what The Miracle Morning is, although I think the entire world has heard about it by now. No, they but haven't, in case which they is haven't. great, right? Isn't that wonderful that as many people as know about something, like they're multiples of that number of people that don't know, which is kind of cool. So Very The Miracle exciting. Morning is by Hal Elrod. So that book is out. <laughs> and doing extremely well. And doing extremely well. And so with him, so I'm his business partner in the series. So not the original book, but all the rest of the books, we published The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents, The Miracle Morning for Salespeople, and The Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. Yeah. That's so great. And some really awesome people in those books. Yeah. Ryan Snow, Pat Petrini. 
Yeah, very, very cool. Michael and Mayer, Michael Reese, Jay Kinder. Yeah, I mean, just the team is incredible. That's really great. Oh, that's yeah. cool. What else is yeah. going on? What else is going on? Um, You know, I run in the mornings. So I do, and I don't think it, probably anyone else is old enough to know this program, but there's a guy named Bill Phillips and he created Body for Life. Yes, I've done it twice. Like 100 <laughs> years ago. Well, yeah. that's still my program. And so I'm still doing the every other day cardio and the every other day lifting. Yeah. And so this morning I was doing that last sprint, the one where you're running as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, if you went any faster, you would see Jesus, yeah. right? It would be, that's your end. I died on a treadmill, but like right before you die, yeah. <laughs> right? Then the workout is over. So that was my morning and I had a really good workout. Oh, uh, that's so cool. And uh, and you're calling in uh, from Austin today, right? Yeah, I live in Austin, that's Texas. That's so great. Yeah, I know that Hal is recruiting heavily Tatiana to, to be down there with you. So I have this vision that we're all going to be together in Austin at some point. Yeah, I have the coffee shop where we're going to hang out. I'm ready. I think that's very possible. Yeah. Honore, uh, you know, this whole body for life thing, I want to go back there for a second because yeah. this vision just popped into my head. In his early, I think maybe his first announcement, didn't he give away his Lamborghini or something? I don't remember. I didn't know about it then, but yes, I still... I, it was yeah. so cool. I had the VHS tape. Oh, I yeah, just yeah. The paper pose. That's like, right. Yeah, I'm such a nerd, and I'm also old, according to the story. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> we are dating ourselves with that. All of the students that I speak to right now are going, what are they talking about? Don't hang up, I promise. Honoré are talking about the oh, We're going to okay. talk about things that are relevant to you, I promise. Yeah. Honoré, let's dig into the good stuff here relating to how you got to this place of just living an epic life. You know, there's such a journey that you've traveled. I'm privileged to know your story to some degree, and I'm learning more and more about you all the time, but I'll never forget our walk in San Diego where you told me about your life. And I was captivated. I remember calling home and talking to my wife after that saying, I just met maybe one of the coolest people walking the face of the earth. Her story is incredible. Who she is today is even more remarkable. And just the meaning that you've given to all these experiences in your life, the gifts that you're now giving to others, sharing in your books, sharing in your speaking, in your coaching, you really are a gift to the world. And I'm, I'm so, I've said this to you, I'm so glad that you've partnered up with Hal, because as you know, Hal and I are brothers and I love this guy, and it's so nice to see him connected to and surrounded by amazing people. You know, our community is so interested in the journey and how you got to where you are today, because sometimes it feels like it happens overnight. It's like, wow, you're always comparing yourself to where somebody else is. And somebody said brilliantly, don't compare your behind the scenes life to somebody else's highlight reel. And we just got your highlight reel. But take us behind the scenes now and give us maybe one story that comes to mind of where you, trans you, you transformed from back to front row. Sure. So back when the earth was cooling. <laughs> no, um, gosh. So the story that I think I want to share is when I ran the Lynchburg 10 miler mm. in 1980, I was 10 years old and there are people that you look at who are miles ahead of you. You think right leap mm. year ahead in terms of their accomplishments and, and all of those things. And, it took me a long time to realize as a PS that no one is posting their I'm covered in snot and tears story on Facebook, right? Everyone's posting the woohoo, it's a great day picture. Anyway, so I'm in Lynchburg. My dad had driven me down there to run that race. And you're supposed to post for the race. You're supposed to stand where you're going to finish. You're supposed to run like with your people, right? And my dad said, go to the front, go to the front, go to the front. And so I went to the front row of the race and stood next to Greta Weitz, who was at the time the bomb diggity of female runners. Okay. Just Google her, everybody like, trust me. <laughs> she was like the Justin Bieber of women's running. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I stood next to her and she reached over and she goes, hi, I'm Greta. Have a good race. Wow. Right. And I'm this 10 year old, you know, I'm tiny and, and, Silly. And of course, I should not have been standing next to her because I was not going to beat her. But that was my first access to someone who kind of said, hey, this is cool. You're here. Let's go. Let's run the race. And then she actually gave me I won and I set some kind of record. I don't even remember. But in these, this is something your students won't know about. Encyclopedia Britannica. They, she gave me as a reward these huge giant books. They were A to K and L to Z. 
And that was my reward for winning my age category and setting this record. And so she came over and put the little thing in my head and gave me the books. And it, it just, in that moment, there was a realization that people are people. And I've kept that almost my entire life, that you can go and go in the back where you're supposed to be, or you can go to the front and meet the queen of running and she'll encourage you. And that's really kind of a cool realization it was for me. That's awesome. You know, Honore, uh, it's such an important point that I think everybody can note right now that people are people. And the idea of even just reaching out, introducing yourself. I have a couple of those experiences in my life where I remember I wrote a letter to Tony Robbins one time and he got a hold of the letter. Mm-hmm. And I thought, there's no way he's ever going to read this. I remember sitting in a coffee shop and reading a book, Happier by Tal Ben Shahar. And I thought, you know, I should just tell him that I liked his book. So I went on his yes. website, I sent him an email. And next thing you know, uh, literally two minutes later, he replies back and says, hey, thanks for reading my book. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I, yeah. can't, I can't believe you did yeah. that. Now, that must happen in your world. You've put out how many books now? I have 19. 19 books. And yeah. so how do you feel when people reach out to you these days? And can you think of a time when somebody reached out to you and it really just meant the world to you? I'm sure there's a ton of those, but does one come to mind? Well, there was a woman who wrote me from London who was a single mom. And she read The Successful Single Moms. I have a six book series for single moms. And she wrote me an email and said, you know, I saved up and I bought your book and I'm so glad I did. And I have these kids. And, you know, it was it was six pages, probably, if we were to print it out of just her journey. And so I wrote her back and I keep what I call a love folder Mm. in my email. Yeah, I haven't had to read it yet. But I've kept it for a day when I feel kind of crappy. Yeah. yeah. Right? I guess on the days I feel crappy, I don't go, let me go check out my love folder. But <laughs> but anyone who sends me words of affirmation, yeah. um, encouragement, because it is a lot to write a book, or I'm sure to make a movie, you know, have a podcast, right? You're yeah. like, leave a review. Like, let me know you're listening. Let me know you're reading. It really does mean a lot. And so when I get an email like that, when I got this woman's, email, I just gave her all the rest of the books. Mm, Because if she had to save up to buy one book, that told me it was a it meant a lot to her. Yeah. And it was nothing for me to just say, I'm happy to send you the rest of the books. Do you want them on your Kindle? Do you want them in your mailbox? How does that work for you? Yeah. And I love doing stuff like that. That's cool. Can you think of a time in your life when you've been given a gift like that, where you sent her the books? Has Can you think of a time when somebody's given you a gift that's meant a lot? Well, I got an email from Hal after I wrote a review for The Miracle Morning, and he said, do you want to do The Miracle Morning for single moms? Yeah. That was, you know. That was a turning point. I was, yeah, I mean, it was such a blessing. Like, I just think God and the all 462 of my angels, <laughs> I have a yeah. fleet, I think. I'm sure if I thought about it, there would. Oh, if it hits you, we'll, we'll come back to it. Lots of those. If I think of something, it'll come. But I get, I get blessings all the time. I think yeah. all of the, all the time because I'm looking for them. I call it bolo. Yeah. In one of my books, I call it bolo. Be on the lookout, which is a police term for look for the suspect. But I say, if you want something, bolo for it. Be on the lookout for it. Yeah. I want to stay with this idea of sharing love for a moment. And this is fresh on my mind because in the front row community right now, we're doing the March gratitude experience where you take, you know, at the end of each day, you have two people that you write down that you're grateful for, and then you reach out an email, a call, a video. And then the next day you have two new people. And at the end of the month, you've got 60 or 62 people or so that you're, you know, sharing love and gratitude with. So go back to this story because, well, first of all, being part of the Miracle Morning process, would it be safe to say how? As, I mean, that's been a huge part of your life. You've got other successful books and you've got, you've been a businesswoman and, and, and been successful in many different areas, but that's been a huge part of your world. Yes. Well, it's, it's a good part of my, my time, right? Yeah. I allocate five hours a week, probably total to yeah. managing the books that are in process. And as any author knows, we're addicted, you know, our crack are the metrics. How many books did I sell? How many downloads were there? And so I'm constantly sending those metrics to the co-authors so they know where they stand and, and just staying on top of things as, as the producer, I'm staying on top of it, but I also do 4,000 other things too. Yeah. You wrote a review for how, and then how reached out to you, right? That's how this whole connection began. Yeah. So I have a 
philosophy that says, if you want something, give it away. Yeah. If you want more of something, give it away. And so I woke up one day and said, self, what would you like more of? Well, I would like more five-star reviews. And so then I realized I wasn't eating my own dog food. I wasn't writing five-star reviews for every book. I would read a book and finish it and go on to the next one. And I thought, huh, I'm asking for something that I'm not doing. The very yeah. next book that I read and wrote a review for was The Miracle Morning. Yeah. And yeah. Hal got a notification of that because I wrote it on Amazon, which is a great place to write a review. But there's also Goodreads.com, which is yeah. kind of a reader site. And if you can get a five-star review on Goodreads, it's like a 10-star review on Amazon, right? And people are much more, they hold those five-star reviews more tightly. That's right. And so he got a notification and he said, that's the first one I ever paid attention to. It was meant to be like we were meant to work together. So neat. And, yeah. and now he's moving to Austin. So at least I think I can say that on air, can I? Yeah, six, <laughs> minutes, be six minutes. He mapped it. Six minutes right. from my house to his house. So. Cool. That's great. If you want something, give it away. Yeah. Powerful words. Mm-hmm. Andre, I want to go back to something you said also in this uh, in the last few moments. It was that you're you're helping with the Miracle Morning, but you've got a lot of other things going on as well. Sure. You may be one of the most productive people I know, and you have your priorities in order. You take care of your health. You take care of your family. That's one of the things I admire and respect about you. Have you always been so productive? Is that something that you can go back to say that was a natural gift of mine, or has that been something that you've developed? I think that's a setting in my software that got... <laughs> revealed fairly early on. I've always been interested in what's effective and what's efficient. And maybe yeah. it's, maybe my software setting is actually laziness. So I just want to know the fastest way, you know, I'm like water. <laughs> what's the fastest way to get there. But I study effectiveness and efficiency and I'm reading the entrepreneur roller coaster right now. And Darren Hardy is talking about how he as the editor of success magazine was interviewing billionaires. And he's like, but Donald Trump spends a lot of time on the golf course. And Richard Branson spends a lot of time frolicking on his private Island. He's like, if, if wealth was a measure of effort, he's like, I would be richer than those guys times 10. So what's the, where do you put the, the fulcrum? right? Yeah. Where do you put the fulcrum so you can get leverage? And so I really am a huge student of that. I always want to know, like, can I, like, now I dictate my books instead of typing them for the most part, right. because I yes. type a lot faster than I, or I talk a lot faster than I type. And so figuring that out and mastering that habit has been really great for just even sending emails or text messages. I very rarely type something if I can say it. Yeah. What are a couple of your uh, favorite productivity hacks throughout the week that you say, these few things really saved me a lot of time and they moved the needle in a huge way? I started saying no. Is my, no is my first response to everything. Would you like to? No. <laughs> <laughs> I delegate a lot. I delegate the the activities that are not my primary activity. So there I write, I coach, I speak. Those are my three. Th- those are my three revenue generators. The, those three things and the the roads that lead to them are the most important things for me to do. So the other activities, social media, Facebook surfing, responding to emails, those types of things, I plan when I'm going to do them in advance. So I never let a day happen. I never just kind of wake up and yawn and go, "Hmm, I wonder what I'm going to do today." Yeah. I know the day before what time I'm going to wake up, what I'm going to do when I wake up. Right now I'm eating very specifically, so I know what I'm going to eat. It's chicken. I'm going to turn into a chicken. Yeah. Yeah, with hair made of broccoli. I just, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but I know where I'm, what I'm going to do and what time I'm going to do it. And so I yeah. have a lot of people that push back on that hack. And my attitude and my belief is that the structure sets me free. Yeah, totally. Because I know then when, you know, when Lexi goes to school, then that's when my work day really begins. And I'm up earlier than that doing the miracle morning. And then I stop and I take a break and I make a breakfast and I spend time with her and I love on her and send her off to school. And then the minute she goes to school, it's like a sprint till the minute she gets home from school. And then at 4.15, you know, the all the business woman hats are off and the mommy hat and the wife hat goes on and that's my family time. So you have to be very effective and very efficient to only work eight hours a day when some of those hours are napping. 
Yeah. <laughs> right? I do take breaks. Yeah, that's right. Because I've learned to manage my energy very effectively. So say no yeah. and schedule every day down to the minute in advance. Even if you're even if part of that is okay from two to four, I'm gonna take a nap. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna work eight to 9.30 on something and from 9.45 to 11 o'clock and then I'm going to go meet someone for lunch and I'm going to be back at 1 and from 1 to 2 I'm going to write 3,500 or 5,000 words and then I'm going to take a nap for two hours. Yeah. It's very important to, to not let life happen to you but you happen to life. Honoré, when it comes to delegating, I get somebody could say, well, Honoré, if you have a lot of money, it's easy to hire a bunch of people to do all the things you don't want to do. When somebody's at that early phase where they feel like their finances are spread thin and yet they know what their talents are, but how do they get other, how do they delegate when they feel like they don't have the money to do so? What, what, what advice do you give to those folks? Well, so do the lower energy, the lower level activities when you're not at your best. So yeah. you've got to eat the frog first. But I have to say, every time I've paid someone to do something, it's been a leap of faith. It's been a leap of finances, right? Because if I'm paying someone 15 or 20 or $10 an hour to do something, my billing rate, my earning rate is much higher than that. It does not make sense for me to do those activities. And I'm essentially stealing from myself if I don't use that time wisely. Yeah. And so that really puts it into perspective. I had someone, I gave a presentation a couple of weeks ago and the, uh, I broke down, if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, you work 48 hours, 40 hours a week. Every single minute is worth 87 cents. Wow. So would you burn 87 cents or would you take basically a dollar and light it on fire because you didn't feel like spending it or saving it or investing it? Of course you wouldn't, right? That's silly. So she actually taped 87 cents to the back of her phone <laughs> and sent me the screenshot and I posted nice. it on my Instagram because I thought it, you have to think about it in terms of that bottom line, like reducing it to the ridiculous is what it's called. But if, if you want to hire someone to do something, sometimes you can trade something. Sometimes you can barter. Sometimes you have a That's skill right. that someone else has or sometimes you can start somebody else small. So my current assistant is now as full time as she'll go. She's a graduate student. And so I started her out at a lower wage and kept increasing her responsibility, increasing her pay. But when we first started, I was like 10 hours a week, $15 an hour, right? And it wasn't that I couldn't afford it. It's that I, it's silly to burn money, right? Yeah. So, but the very first time I hired a housekeeper, it was a leap of financial faith. Every time yeah. I've hired someone to do something, it's been a leap of financial faith. But what's interesting is, the, the saying leap in the net will appear there. It's a saying for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's a real thing. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I'm taking huge risks this year, big, big risks, and I'm investing huge and it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary as heck. And I told somebody yesterday, I said, I feel like I am gambling a bit, but it's like a, it's like a safe gamble. I feel the odds are in my favor, sure. especially when I control how hard I work and in, you know, the, the effectiveness that I bring to each day. And I how smart you work. Yeah. How smart you work. Yes. There's no doubt. Yes. And, and being in a position where you know that you're, you're at a time when that, that decision feels right. It's nothing's guaranteed. Yes. I think that's the, there is real risk involved, but, but at some point you need to jump at some point. Yes. Well, and you can always find someone who's willing to do it, even if they're a VA that's in Thailand, right? You can yeah. find someone who will work that's for right. very little. I have an American English speaking genius who's my assistant. I got very lucky, but I had four or five not so great assistants before that's I right. found her, right? You ha will have to keep looking right. and don't get discouraged. You wouldn't say, you know, and this is a, a Tonyism, right? I'm sure you've heard it. How long would you give your average baby to walk before you just said, never mind, you're just not going to walk. Yeah, not going to happen. Not going to happen. So if that's your outcome, then that's your outcome. And so every step along the way, I've said, okay, I can afford more money for this. I can afford more money for yeah. advertising or I can afford more money to put into my business. But there was a while there where it was like the money would come in and the money would go out. I was just the conduit. I just got yeah. to handle it. Right. But it was like the check would come and I would go and then I would pay out, you know, because when you have different businesses, right, my thing is like every business has to be profitable. Yeah. And so it's a leap of faith. And then one day you realize, hey, I, I paid all my bills. I got five dollars. I'm good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can go to Starbucks. 
you do a lot of these interviews. You're a busy woman doing writing these books, doing these coaching calls. What's a question you wish people would ask you more often? If it's possible for you, is it possible for other people? And what's standing in the way? For other people? Mm -hmm. When you say what's standing in the way for other people? Yeah. So what do you think that is? What is standing in the way for most people? Belief. Belief in themselves. Mm. Mm. What shifted... Have in your life, Honoré, did you go through a transformation of not having belief to having belief? Oh, sure. Did- so I was a foster kid. So I was, I've been on my own since I was 16. So at one time, I didn't want to have good self-esteem. I just wanted to have zero self-esteem as opposed mm-hmm. to less than zero. When you're at zero, it's kind of like being in debt, right? The first yeah. goal is to have no mm-hmm. debt. And then you think, oh, I'd like to have savings. What is that? Right? I didn't. I didn't aspire to feel great about myself. I just aspired not to feel bad. So getting uh-huh. to zero was my first goal. Yeah. And I think the firewalk, Tony Robbins firewalk. I went to UPW in 1993 and did the firewalk, and that was the very beginning of. After reading Unleash the Power Within in 1992. It was a gift from someone and reading that book. And I chose to make Tony's voice the voice in my head because the voice in my head telling me I couldn't do it was pretty loud. It looked pretty hopeless. I I lived at a time where the college degree was the mandate. And if you didn't have one, you were a loser, right? And so here I was, 22 years old, no college degree, no way to pay for a college degree, making it, right? Paying my bills, but just barely, yeah. and um, uh, read Awaken the Giant Within and then heard about this seminar and then called and it was $695. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And so <laughs> I told my boyfriend, who was a pretty well-known photographer at the time, and I said, I really just want to go to this seminar. And he's like, well, then you should go because he was rich, right? That's what rich people say. And you should just do it. And I was like, well, but I, I don't have $695. And he said, Yes, you do. (laughs) And he said, if you'll pay half, then I'll pay half. And he's like, and if I need to loan you your half, but you have to pay me back, you have to promise. And I had $300. So he gave me the other $395 and I went to UPW. And it was interesting because then I broke up with him because then I realized he was not the right guy. (laughs) So I paid him back, but we obviously are not still together. Um, But that was the beginning of my transformation going across the firewalk. And then I went again. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember specifically what some of your limiting beliefs were and what your new beliefs were after that? I know this, I know it's taken you back a, a couple of years here. Wow. I don't think that I thought I could do anything. So I think my, my belief was probably I can't do anything. And my new belief was I can do something if I put my mind to it or anything yeah. is possible if I'm committed. Yeah, I, I took probably one of Tony-isms. And just made it mine, if that makes sense. Totally. Honoré, I think it's so powerful for everybody listening today in the Front Row community to hear you talk about this, that you literally grew up uh, as a foster kid, you know, lacking belief, aiming to get to neutral. And then here you are, an empowered, successful coach, speaker, an author sharing wisdom. And I think that your life is just such a great example of, of a complete transformation. I think that's beautiful. What do you think, when you look back on it, what part of your story are you most shocked by? Like even when you look back, do you say, oh my gosh, I'm so shocked by that part of my story. Or what part, or maybe I'll ask it a different way too, is mm-hmm. when you look back, what part are you most pleasantly surprised by with your story or the part that you like talking about the most with your story? Well, I don't talk about it very much, but I am surprised that I never developed an addiction to something or some really self-destructive behavior. Right. Because then I can close the loop because some people are going, well, did she run the 10 miles and set the record or was she a foster kid? Right. So I lived with my original parents until I was 15, but my dad got very upset that I was not making a lot of money running. So he had visions of Olympic gold medals and sponsorships and those types of things, but he was very physically abusive of me. And so you, it's very hard to be a top performing athlete or business person or person when you're in a very toxic and abusive environment. So I ended up in foster care in my teens and lived in a children's oh, home. Wow. So that's, that's, I just wanted to connect those dots. Cause I think it's yeah. kind of like, well, was it awesome or was it awful? And the answer is yes. 
So I had some <laughs> right. conflicting, I had some conflicting messages. The message was you can do anything and you can achieve anything and watch you go. And then the other thing is you're not even worthy of your own parents' love. And so that's a wow. That's a big disconnect, right? And I still to this day have a hard time making sense of it because I am a mom now. Sure. And I could never look at my daughter and and feel anything but just love and passion and adoration and encouragement for her, even though she is a 16 year old girl. Yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> right? She does, she yeah. does test the limits, but most yeah. of the time I just like, I, I love the fact that at 16, the first thing she wants in the morning is a hug from her mom. I just think that's the best thing ever. She's a, a wonderful, wonderful person. I enjoyed meeting her very much. Yeah. She's a pretty cool kid. So the thing that I don't ever really get to talk about is that, that connecting those dots. And so wherever someone is in their life and whatever they've been through, that their history is not a predictor of their, of the, the ultimate history. Like when they get to the end of their life, that tomorrow is a new day to the rest of today is new and you get to to decide what you're going to do with it. But the thing that I am shocked about is that I never, I was offered drugs and I said, no, and I offer, I would drink on occasion, but it was never an addictive thing for me. And I feel like that is such a blessing because I think a lot of people yes. struggle with addictions of different kinds. And yes. I'm quite frankly surprised that I didn't end up dead yeah. addicted to something. Totally. Yeah, because it could have gone a different way for me for sure. And I am blessed. I feel very blessed that I didn't. Honoree, feel free to redirect this in a different, you know, if we don't yeah, want to sure. go down this road. Yeah, but, uh, not cry on the front row. No, you can. You can cry. Uh, we welcome tears, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's very real. I'm in a very good place, so it's okay. I you are in a very good place. Yeah, I can talk yeah. about it and recognize everything that I went through was a blessing because I have yeah. such compassion for people when they're going yeah. through things because I've sure. through things, I've gone through things. And so I can come w- fully present to oh, you're going through this. I, yeah, t- totally sucks. Now let's get you out of it. Let's get you to the good place. Let's take it and make it something awesome. Exactly. So Andre, is it okay if I stick here on this, on the foster sure. uh, child part of your life, um, foster teen? One of my questions is what was that experience like being a foster child? You know, how were your foster parents? Great. What was that time of life like? Um, so I went to a, a huge high school and so when I was put into a foster home, the foster family was in the same school district. So I didn't change schools. And my foster dad was an Air Force captain, an Air Force officer. And his wife, my foster mom, her name was Juana, and she was from Thailand. And so I was Luke Sao, which is daughter. And she made me do all kinds of things that I didn't want to do, like cut up a chicken and like all that kind of stuff. And I had a foster brother in the same class, the same age as I was. And then a foster brother that was two years younger. I didn't live with them very long. I mean, I wasn't with them for an entire school year even because the foster system back then like put you somewhere and then sent you home to your parents. Yeah. So I was with them and then I went home. It's very surreal. It was, it, 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 I figured out later that, if you come from chaos, you tend to create chaos until you recognize that's what you're creating. And then, so now I crave peace. I don't want any chaos in my house. I don't like it. I don't even like mess, right? And I think it's a reaction, a conscious reaction and a response to that of wanting to create peace and happiness and love. But because I saw it, I saw two people who were still married, happily married, who had two children that they loved. And I was like, yeah. what, what do you mean? Like, there's right. no yelling. There's no craziness. There's no insanity. It's just people going to work and going to school and coming home and having a good time. <laughs> I was like, this is not right. This is not right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Honore, how was your relationship with your parents after that, when you went back home, you know, in the years following? Ooh, I wanted so much for them to love me and to care for me. And so I was the good girl getting good grades, doing what I was supposed to do. And there was just a lot of dysfunction there. And so it was very rocky. So I went from foster home to children's home to living with a friend and her parents and graduating high school. And I just, there's no relationship now today because I realized that I, I worked on myself. And once you are 
confronted or shown or whatever personal growth, right? Once you recognize that you are in charge and it's up to you to make it or break it, right? Mm. That never goes away, right? If you, if you embrace it and I embraced it. And so the more I embraced it and the healthier I got. So I went through a lot of counseling. I remember going to a therapist. I got married and my husband then wanted a divorce. And so I went to a therapist and she said, you have post-traumatic stress because of all the stuff you've been through. And she's like, I've got a manual. And she's like, it's going to take you about five years to go through this manual. And Lexi was two and I had a year, right? And I just looked at her and I said, honey, I don't have five years. So I went and worked through that manual, that five-year manual in a year. And it was the most intense, wow, awful, great work that I ever did. Awful, great work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could tell you that, that my guy had therapy day, right? Where I'd get up and I'd go, I'd, my daughter would go to school and I would go to therapy and then I would go home and work for five or six hours on the exercises in the notebook, in this workbook. Yeah. And I'd cry and <laughs> there was all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of snot, a lot of snot and tears. And, yeah. But working through it and recognizing that what happened to me wasn't about me, Yeah. right? What happens until you're, you're, you're all grown up, right? That's about your, the experience your parents helped to create for you. But what happens after that's up to you. And if I was going to keep creating some of the things I was creating in my life, I was responsible for that. And that, that was, you know, I've got a finger pointing at you. I got three pointing back at me. That's a pretty tough pill to swallow. But then when you realize it can be a good thing, and which is what I recognize, right? So the healthier I got, the less I was around the toxic. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Thank you for opening up and sharing that, Honoré. I know that my heart right now feels so connected to you because I know how real your journey has been. And it is with all your success today, it's so easy to just, I mean, we could talk for 10 hours, 10 days, 10, we could talk for an entire year just on what's going on in your life right now and how you're being productive and how you're running yes. your business yeah. and all that. But, you know, this, this show and the front row community is so much about embracing the transformation. And uh, as you know, with the charity, we serve people who are fighting for their lives in many ways. And I guess it feels like a lot of times in situations like yours, and um, we all have our own struggles in our own unique ways, kind of feels like we're fighting for our life. And, um, yes. and, and you, you were fighting for love and love often feels like life in, in, in its totality. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So if we fast forward a little bit, I'll get you out of that Woo-hoo! era of your yes. life. <laughs> How do you celebrate life now these days? How do you celebrate your life? I keep everything simple. So I've simplified life. We've downsized and gotten rid of like the stuff that owned us as opposed to us owning our stuff. We just talked about this. Can you, can you expand on this a little bit for the group? But like, how have you done that? Cause that's fascinating. I love this. Yeah. So at a time when people are buying big houses and furnishing them and collecting things, I'm giving stuff away. I was, and I already went through that. I got the big house. I got the big mortgage. I got the big, 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 big stuff. And then I went, I don't own my stuff. My stuff owns me. And so I just said, I said to my husband, I was like, let's get rid of it and do this. And he was like, well, I could do that. I don't know about you, princess. And I was like, hide and watch. And like 54 (laughs) trips later, (laughs) at Goodwill, I'd show up with a van full of stuff. And they were like, oh my gosh, we love you, right? Yeah, yeah. And so now we live in a small space and it's wonderful and we can take off. And so we are taking off and taking little trips as a family as I said, my daughter is 16, so at some point she will leave. And so I really want as many memories and magic moments with her as I possibly can get. Mm. And then my husband and I will continue that, hopefully for lots and lots of years to come. Yeah. Experiences, not things, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the experiences that you most want to create with uh, Lexi? You know, if you had to say, or and let me ask this a different way. Mm. I would say, what are two experiences that you absolutely want Lexi to have in her childhood? Because I guess you've still got two years left before we call her an adult. Well, I think the the overarching experience that I want her to have is that she is fiercely loved unconditionally by her mom. Mm. That's an everyday thing. Like I look at her at least once every day and just really kind of say, I just, I really love you. How else do you do that, by the way? How do you show her or tell her that she's fiercely loved? Um, I rub her back. 
she likes to lay on the couch with her head in, in my lap, especially she hasn't been feeling well the last couple of days. And so she's like, can't you just put down the computer and love on me? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> or I'll say, you know, it's uh, so funny. Last week I was, I was at the, I was at that point in the book, right. When you're reading a really good thriller where it's like, everything's coming to a head and then like, you're going to find out what's happening is I'm 20 pages from the end. And she comes in and she's like, hi, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> would, right. Did you want to talk about them? Right, you know, right, so right. I try to I try to have my feet match my lips. So I try yeah. to say that I love her. I try to do things that show her I love yeah. her, and then I physically show her that I love her by embracing her and, and kissing her and, and yes. noxious and being fun and playful and those types of things. The other thing is I'm creating fun experiences for her, and so my 16th birthday came and went without even an acknowledgement. Her 16th birthday was four tickets to Justin Bieber and, and I, the crazy mom, I'm taking her and her three friends to see Justin Bieber in Houston. And so I'm kind of making it a thing because I want her to look back her whole life and remember that there were these times when we did these fun things for her because we could. That's cool. And I, and it's not about the thing, right? It's not about the, the Justin Bieber tickets because if I couldn't afford to do that or if that wasn't something that was interesting, I would figure out something else to do. Yeah. So it's not about it's not always, it's not about the money, right? It's always about like how can you take how do you take ten dollars and make an amazing experience? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What values do you want Lexi to take away from her time with you? If she said, "Hey, I, these three values were were what I took from my mom," what would they be? Oh, um, I don't know that I'm winning this <laughs> right now. Um, love, I think I'm winning. Hard work. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. To love, to love herself, to love others, and to love what she does, whatever she yeah. ends up choosing to do for money. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful answer. Honore, I this this is uh, this is so cool. I want to want to ask you. I want to switch subjects here a little bit or directions, and I want to talk to you about the end of our life. So you know, this ride, of course, ends for all of us. How do you process mortality? You know, how do you view end of life? And does it inspire you? Does it frighten you? A little bit of the both, of course. I don't think we know. I don't know what happens. I think I'm an old soul. I think I've been here before. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of fear around it. I don't want it to be over yet. I feel like I just made it through the, the crappy stuff. <laughs> so... <laughs> It would be kind of like, oh, you're happy, you know, then you're dead. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What am I saving 10% of my income for every month? Okay, like, <laughs> why do I have that idea? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have it. I don't have fear around it. I, I, want, it, I want it to go on a little bit longer. I'm curious, right? What, who's going to win the election, right? Who's going to win the next Grammy, right? Oh, that's it, Honoré. You brought it to politics. Oh, no. We we joked about it earlier. You just brought up the election. All right, here we go. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Here we go, go. Here we go. Okay, you first. Who are you voting for? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm curious about how things are going to turn out. And when I see that someone has passed away right before a major event, I think, well, maybe they know anyway, right? But I started yeah. reading books about near-death experiences and those sorts of things a long time ago. So I'm just convinced that we go and we're in a different form or we come back as a different person, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'll be interested to find out. I just don't want to find out right now. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do you most want to do in the, in, in the years that you do have ahead? What is the most compelling dream or vision or purpose that you have for your time? What's the music that's still in you that you most want to get out to the world? Well, I'm still writing books. I still have a, a few more books to write. I have a few more books to produce according to how. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think many. Make many. And I want to travel. I haven't yeah. been very many places. So that's We're, next. What's next on the hit list for travel? Um, so London, Paris, Europe, all the places. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, those are wonderful spots, Honoré. I can't wait to see your front row pose yes, standing it. in front of the Eiffel Tower, yes. Big Ben, yes. Parliament. Yes. What does living life in the front row mean to you? 
just what I said that I wanted to leave for Lexi, loving, loving myself, loving others and loving what I do. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful definition. I may borrow that on oh, for, the, for the front row factor book or quote you in there. Excellent. I'm down with that. Yes. What's one thing that people listening today could go do in their own personal lives in the next 24 hours to do what you just talked about? Loving yourself, loving others, loving the experiences. If someone is having a hard time connecting how they can love themselves, write down all the things you love about yourself. Or if there, you can't think of anything because there's somebody out there that's going, I just, today I'm just, right, my, my gas tank is empty and I get that. Yeah. Then call people and ask them, what do you love about me? I yeah. need three minutes. I used to have a, a phone call with a friend of mine and this is going back 15 years, but he was my, my bestie. So we were a willing grace. Yeah, And we had permission to call each other and go, I'm in the middle of something. We don't want to talk about the story because we're going to go down the rabbit hole, right? Then there's yeah. Kleenex. Yeah. So I would just call him or he would call me and go, okay, three minutes, everything that's wonderful about me, everything that you love, go. Yeah. And so call people and say, what do you love about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, because, because in those yeah. moments of when you don't feel so great, if you can call someone and just say, please tell me what you love about me because I'm not loving myself right at the moment. You'll yeah. be surprised what people will come back with. Be surprised yeah. what people's perceptions are of you in a good and wonderful way. Yeah. And then turn around and do that for the person. Kind of your like your two person a day experiment. It's like, thank you for that. I needed to hear that. And here's what I love about you. First and foremost, yeah. that I could call you and ask you what you love about me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and you can yeah. you can just reach out to your community on a random basis and say, "Can I take two minutes and tell you what I love about you?" Yeah. You know, that's like imagine getting that phone call, right? Somebody calls yeah. and says, "Hey, do you mind if I take two minutes and just tell you what I love about you?" Yes. That's just that's a wow. Yeah. I, mean, I don't care how successful you are, important you are, and you and I both know these people. We know people that are world famous. And they, they are just people and they love those comments just as much as anybody. Now, they might get a lot of them, but I will tell you that they mean something. Sometimes they don't. It's like the supermodel that everyone thinks is dating and they're not going on a date because no one will ask. And it's like, well, that can't be possible. Totally. It's, it's possible. It's, it's a real thing. I remember that being a young man and I was talking to this really beautiful woman and I, it, we, we had become friends and I said, you must get hit on all the time. And she goes, no. I, my brain was was uh, trying to wrap my I was trying to wrap my brain around how that's possible. I thought people are intimidated or they would think that, or, sure. you know, and sure. so and and I know that's not always the case. Sometimes uh, you would find somebody who totally rejects your compliment because maybe they are in a space where they're getting a lot of them at the moment. And it sort of blends in, but most of the time, I think people really appreciate those. So do that today, front row community. That's your challenge, right? Reach out and say, call somebody right now and say these words. Say, do you mind if I love on you for the next? two minutes. And if you're in a place where you're not feeling like you're ready to pour out, then do it on a raised setting and, and ask somebody, hey, can you tell me what you love about me? Or post it on Facebook. Post it on Facebook, right? Say, I just did this. I am not, I'm not having a great day. Tell yes. me what you love about me. Yeah. And don't tell them what's wrong. Don't get stuck in the story. Focus on the thing that they tell you that they love you. And then call John Vroman and, and love on John Vroman for two minutes. Ah, oh, thanks. The whole podcast was a big setup to that moment. Yeah. We just completed yes. why we yes. came here today. Yes. Yes. Hey, Honore, this is this is great. I'm so glad we talked about this. This is so perfect. Yesterday, I posted something on Facebook that said, and I got this from our friend, Pat Flynn, who you were just on his uh, TV show. I was on his TV show. What yeah, I mean, Smart Passive Income that. TV, yes, right? I know. Yeah. So, and, and I'm talking to Pat later and I'm reading his book and in his book, he talks about reaching out and asking people, what are your superpowers? Now I've done this exercise in the past to, you know, in a variation or to some degree of this, but I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just play along. Right. Mm -hmm. So I post this on Facebook and I'm amazed at how much value I got from this exercise wow. of, of asking people to tell you what you're essentially you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah. What do you love about me? What are, what are some of my superpowers? What do you love about me? <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's yes. uncomfortable for a lot of us, especially it when is. we're trying to be humble, yes. when we're trying to not to make this all about us, but we do need some way to, to water our, our own tree. Tell me what you love about me. And then I'll respond with what I love about you in the comments. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Honoré, one word or one sentence only gut reaction to these questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. You can skip or pass if you, if you get one. Is this the bonus round? Yeah, this is the bonus round. You get extra. This is double points. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. These are just fun. We just want to be playful with you. And you're such a playful person. Oh, can I take a moment, Honoré, and tell you what I love about you? Sure. <laughs> Before we move on. My gut reaction. Can I do that? Yes. No. <laughs> All right. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, I want to tell you that I mentioned early on, if you jumped in in the middle, you somehow missed this. Honoré radiates light. You know what's so interesting is right as I said that, Honoré, you got brighter on the screen. I don't know what just happened, but literally got brighter. Your smile, you smile with your eyes. You smile with your soul. You're somebody that is an encourager. You lift people up. I love how you challenge people. I love and appreciate how you're helping me with my book writing process right now. You've been generous with your time time and energy, you pose outstanding questions before you comment. You, I can tell you're thoughtful in the question that you're about to pose. I can tell that you are selfless with your wealth of knowledge that you have paid both in time, energy, and a million other ways to achieve in your life and to acquire in your life. And you've generously are now giving that away in so many different avenues. I would love that you play full out. I love that you are somebody that in really healthy ways in all areas of your life, and I'm sure that you have things that you're struggling with, like because you're human and that just shows up, but uh, but you you are doing uh, in what what I would consider to do a fan, you're doing a fantastic job of creating a harmonic, very wellness approach to uh, having a wellness approach to your life where things are well in many areas, like your desire to less is, you know, shrink a little bit, less is more. And you are consciously living, you know, and I love that about you, that you're you're really being conscious in your approach to life. And so those are just a couple I could go on, but I'll probably get to the rest of these questions here from them. So now you want me to answer questions? (laughs) Thank you for that. I love you right back. I I, I feel all those same things about you. Thank you. Ah, well, all right, here we go. Number, question number two. Oh no, question number one. I never got to question number one. I paused for the moment of uh, shining the light. (laughs) So question number one, what's your favorite meal of the day? Now, I know right now you're on this chicken kick, but when you're not on Body for Life, what is your favorite meal of the day and what's typically on the menu? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, which is why I'm on Body for Life right now. You know what? I have a meal of the week. Yeah. So I have a one, I have a Saturday night meal and it's whatever I'm craving and I don't put any limits on it. Yeah. So that's my favorite meal. So it's normally in... In Austin, if I can, I go to North, the restaurant, which mm-hmm. is at the Domain, which is an outdoor mall. Check it out if you're local, everybody. And there is a, a dish called Sprazzo Pretti. Mm. Sprazzo Pretti. And it's, it's pasta, and it's cream sauce, and it's chicken, and it's pine nuts, and it's spinach. It's perfect. Yeah. What's something fun that you've collected in your lifetime? Angels. What kind of angels? Oh, you mean like the ones that you set on your mantle or like? <laughs> well, no, I have, um, I have angel jewelry. Like I have a yeah. necklace and then I collect angel ornaments for my Christmas tree. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Who are you a raving fan of? Do I only have to say one? One, one person that comes to mind. Don Vroman. All right. Yeah, you sure. passed. For sure. That, that's always a setup for my guests and uh, congratulations <laughs> to you. Uh, now, your, now your show will be aired. <laughs> What's one book or documentary outside of the Miracle Morning, of course, and Vision to Reality and any one of our other 16 amazing books, <laughs> but what's one book or documentary that should be mandatory for all people to experience? The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. So it was actually the book he wrote before. He kind of made Think and Grow Rich, which is smaller, yeah. but Law of Success is 1,500 pages and I've read it several, several times. If you had to sum up maybe like the big idea or a big idea from the book, what would it be? Or your favorite idea? The overarching theme of the book is that you are the owner of your life and everything in it, that you are the driver, right? You're the driver, you're the engine. It's all up to you. And so you just learning these guiding principles are brilliant. And I think the law of success should be the manual that kids read for sure. That's cool. I've never read that, so added to the list. What does it mean to be fully alive? Living on the edge. 
The, yeah. Right? Just kind of like doing the thing that scares you every day. What's your edge, Honore? How do you know that you're at your edge? Like, so like when I'm running on the treadmill? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen videos of where people find that edge. Yeah, like it's like, not pretty. Like, well, for me, when it's like when I'm at the fastest speed I can run, and if someone just came along and pushed it up one just more, touched you, yeah, I just, yeah, like, fly right off the back. That's the, yeah. that's my indicator. That's your edge, nice. Yeah. What problem do you most want to solve in the world? People being mean to other people. How can you solve that problem? How will you solve it? How are you attacking that now? You can expand on that a little bit if you want. I'm not mean. Yeah. And when I see people being mean, I go away. I've literally gotten up from on the from a discussion and go people like you to bring up politics, right? Like there are people that can't just like their person; they have to hate the other person. Uh, that's really yeah. that's painful because yeah. everyone's a person. So even if you disagree with their philosophy or their doctrine, yeah, they're still a person, and that's hateful, right? right? Yeah. So unless you would say it right to them. And be more constructive, right? Like I always say, whatever happened to if you don't have anything nice to say, be quiet. So yeah. I, I don't engage in that. I don't like it. And then I do my very best to just be someone who only posts light, who only yeah. posts hope, who only posts encouragement. Right. Or I just don't say anything. If I'm feeling snarky or cranky, I just don't say anything. Because it's right. not that I don't snotty things on occasion. I'm human. But I just I just think about the times I've been on the receiving end of it myself and how much it, it can hurt to get that. Yeah. And so I just try not to, to do it. And then I try to be the the person going, you can do it. Yeah. Because you can't be in the front row pose and be cranky. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. My son will show you how to do that. Oh, okay, he will? Uh, yeah, he, he'll show you how. <laughs> do you have a personal mantra or a favorite quote that you sort of live by? Probably if there's always a way if I'm committed. Yeah. What's the next? Oh, actually, no, we are, I already asked you this one, but uh, let me skip, skip ahead. If you had to pick one person to switch brains with for a day, who would it be and why? Probably my husband because he's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is his unfair advantage when it comes to his intelligence? What is it that he is super smart about that you love? I know it's probably many, many things. What's everything I can ask him about. So because I have gaps in my education, right? So yeah. different high schools, no college, he has studied everything. So he studied yeah. religions and history and everything. And so I can ask him something and not only does he not make me feel stupid because I'm not stupid. I just have a gap in my knowledge. Yeah. But he also explains it in such a way that I come through knowledgeable. I think that's a very special person. His brain is just really smart and he's dyslexic. So he was told for a long time that he wasn't smart, but his mom told him that he was and he's brilliant. So his brain, I would like, please go 200. Honore, I just wrote down in my notes. Can, I'm going to paraphrase this, okay. right? You said, I'm not stupid. I may just have a gap in my knowledge, yeah. right? Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'm learning how to write fiction and I have my tutors in fiction. So I'm learning words like protagonist, antagonist, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't know any of that stuff. Yeah. I never learned yeah. that stuff. It's like, there's a good guy and a bad guy. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> right oh yeah and it's like i'll go to my we have monthly meetings right and i'll go and yeah. i'll be like okay guys here's my you know my silly question and they're like no sure. this is great and they love it like people who have knowledge and who have a heart for people want to give you that knowledge totally yeah and i think this is so important for people to know because everybody's felt and i'm going to use this term carefully here they've all felt stupid at some point totally. the, the idea that i'm lost i don't know what's going on that so however you label that stupid is one way that we right. might might come out of our mouths but i think it's just so brilliant to look at something that it's not that you're stupid it's that you just have a gap you know right yeah. now and and you can fill that gap but that's yeah. really an empowering thought. And you can learn anything. Your brain is a supercomputer. That's yeah, better that's right. than any supercomputer that man has ever created. So if someone sure. has told you you can't learn something, that's yeah. just not true. You may not have a, a natural aptitude for it, but a natural aptitude is, is only as good as the muscle that's built to exercise it to yeah. and deploy it. 
Uh, that's powerful. Final question. If you could go see any performance or live event in the front row, and it would be, have to be something you can go see now, mm-hmm. what comes to mind as something that's uh, on your hit list? I want to go see J-Lo at, in Vegas. Oh, yeah? yeah? Is she performing now? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. J-Lo. Yeah. Have you been a longtime fan? I'm a longtime fan of anyone who has stayed the t- stood the test of time. Yeah. Right? I pay attention to who, who you know, people that come and go. That's all right. But the people who keep reinventing themselves and keep upping their game and keep improving, yeah. she's, pretty, she's pretty amazing. So if you met J-Lo, what would you, what would you do? What would you ask her? What would you say to her? I would want to know what she thinks. I want to know what she reads. I want to know what she eats. I want to know yeah. what she uses on her skin. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. J-Lo, if you're out there and you're listening yeah. to the Front Row Factor podcast, please she reach says, out. Andre, whatever your skincare regimen is, okay, thank That's you. right. Thank you. you got the questions. Yes. All right. Or if somebody out there knows J-Lo, if you've got a connection to J-Lo, please yeah. make this come true yeah. for Honoré. That's, right. That's great. Honoré, any other, I know we're running out of time here, any other final thoughts for the Front Row community, which I want to also say, thanks for the Front Row support in so many ways. A portion of all the uh, Miracle Morning book sales go to support Front Row Foundation. Hal and the community, the Miracle Morning community, have donated massive amounts of money to the charity. Too much, I, I don't even know what that number is because it's it's really, it's, it's a lot at this present moment. You all have been a huge part. You have, yeah. So for this community, um, donors, supporters, recipients, everybody, final parting words, anything you want to share with them? Advice, counsel, questions? One of the things that I do is I don't do anything that I wouldn't do if it was on my last day. When someone says, what would you do if, if blah, 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 I'm like, I'm doing it. Yeah. That's my suggestion is live, live life on the edge. Do the thing that scares you, all the stuff that you hear, but it's a real, it's a real thing. You can absolutely take, squeeze the last drop of juice out of the lemon. Awesome. Honore, where can, uh, where can people find you? Honorecorder.com. Honorecorder.com. We'll link to that in the show notes. Uh, We'll give you the spelling for that. Can you just spell it out? Okay. H-O-N-O-R-E-E-C-O-R-D-E-R.com. And I'm also just at Honore. On yeah. everything, so Twitter and Instagram and all that. Cool. Yeah. Check her out, everybody. And and Honore, you've written some outstanding books. I'm holding one in my hands right now. If you're on YouTube, you can check it out. Vision to Reality. If somebody was going to start somewhere with your books, and I know that you write for specific niches, sure. so this may be a totally loaded question. Would this be the book to start with then? Probably that book, Vision to Reality, or I did the 10th anniversary of my first book, Tall Order which is master strategies to organize your life and double your success in half the time. So that 10th anniversary edition of the book might be a good place to start. Wonderful. That's great. And so I'm going to ask the Front Row community to uh, check out Honoré's work, pick up a copy of her book, and also to make sure to reach out to Honoré. Email her, call her, write a review. Please share that love because it's uh, you know what a core of what we talked about today. Uh, you know, and I think Andre, you said so many brilliant things here today. Mm-hmm. I've literally written down several big ideas that I will stick with me. And I, I loved if you want something, give it away. I, I loved getting into your life story uh, today and and you being very vulnerable with us about that transformation and experience of your life. And I love that it, you you just, again, have such a positive way of reframing and life, looking at life in a way that, that allows you to operate at your best. Thank you for creating a world that my boys are going to grow up in. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to uh, hanging out with you in Austin at some point. Yes, when you live here. I'm ready. I'm excited about, gosh, so many places that we have an opportunity to connect, but best year ever live, December yeah. 2017, possibly we're going to see each other there. So totally. many great places where we'll, we'll be able to hang out. Thanks again, Honoré. All my best to you and your family. Huge hugs from the Romans and can't wait to have you back on the show again and talk about uh, what's next. I can't wait to have a great day. Take care. What's up, Front Row? John here. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show today, get more Honoré at honorécorder.com. We'll also have all the show notes at frontrowfactor.com slash podcast, and you can get links to all the things that we mentioned today. You can also find Honoré's books at Amazon. I'd start with Vision to Reality as a great place. You'll enjoy it, and then make sure to leave her a raving review. Speaking of reviews, thanks for reviewing this podcast, and if you want to leave us an iTunes review and you haven't done so yet, go to frontrowfactor.com slash review. We love to hear your thoughts. 
Hey, listen, Honoré's Encore episode, that's questions from you in the community directly to Honoré, we're going to be posting that in just a couple of days. Now, if you want to ask questions to future guests, go to frontrowfriends.com. That'll take you to our Facebook page, and you can join the conversation there. And listen, if you really enjoyed this show today, ask yourself who would benefit from Honoré's wisdom and share this episode. It's the greatest gift that you can give to your friend to Honoré, and to our community in total. So thanks so much. Until next time, keep living your life in the front row. That's all for this episode of The Front Row Factor. To discover more simple and effective ways to lead a fearless front row life, please visit frontrowfactor.com and subscribe to John's Four Minutes in the Front Row, where he shares quick stories from real life experiences. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope our show inspires you to live big, give big, and experience life to the fullest. See you next time on The Front Row Factor.